Hey everybody, <laughs> coming at you with another exciting video. Uh, this time it's a tag video. And I was tagged by Jeps Outdoor Adventures, all right, to show uh, my cook set. And uh, when he went to tag me on it, I told him, I said, you know something, that's going to be pretty complicated. I said, because I've got quite a cook set. I don't just have one. And so uh, what I did is uh, I got kind of overwhelmed because I just started digging around in these boxes. And... Um, I just I went I went until the table was filled up and so <laughs> I tried to <clears throat> I tried to minimize the store bought stuff and uh, because a lot of my stuff is uh, specialty and handmade items and so uh, I've got I, I dug out three of my uh, favorite store bought cook sets and then the rest of this junk right here we're gonna go through and I'm gonna try to show it to you one at a time and just kind of you know. Kind of a fun video because you're gonna you're gonna get to uh, kind of take a look at my world and my collection of stuff. And uh, like I said, this is just the cook sets. This is not the actual cook setups like my grills and cookers and things that I have built. And uh, in the future, I'll try to dig all those boxes out and get all them together in one video. But for now, let's just work on this right here for now. So, <laughs> looking at all all of my cook sets. <laughs> For the sake of being organized, which I don't believe there's any way possible this video can be organized. It's just not going to happen. There's just, there's just too much, there, there's too much chaos on this table here. There's too much stuff over here. And there's, there's stuff behind me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, um, just in general, okay, I've got, I've got like, there's multiple boxes. I have like around here, back behind here, there's just stacks and stacks of cardboard boxes. It's nowhere near as exciting looking as the rest of the gear room. And there's like seven boxes full of cookware. You know, the rest of it, I've got like a box full of rope. And then I've got like boxes full of um, uh, sleep gear. What sleep gear is not hanging up with the clothes? So, most of the boxes look like this. Okay. You've got all these things in here that are in plastic I mean uh in oh no I just lost part of that <laughs> oh that, that was a piece I was gonna add and most of this stuff in here is in these bags I make and a lot of these will contain like bowl cookers and tree grills and regular flat grills that you put on the ground and here's a bowl cooker and I think this is a that, that's a uh, ember lit right there and then I mean you can just see the the numbers of them hanging grills I mean they're just all this kind of stuff in here even even little mini grills this is a little tiny grill right here uh this is another grill i mean they just i've got six boxes filled with these things this is an oven i remember building that but i can't i can't dig everything out of all these because a lot of these contain um <coughs> pots and pans and things that's something that I'm, to that and some of them a lot of them will contain some of the things that i need like the uh pan the hot pan holders and things and things for dealing with fire so what i'm doing is i just basically i went to that big box over there and i pulled out the majority of the big stuff uh the loose stuff because in reality a lot of times what i will do is a lot of times whenever i'm picking just in general some of this cookware like these stainless steel bowls like this, for example. This is one that it's similar to, it's similar to this one. It's a stainless steel bowl. I love these stainless steel bowls, especially in the winter time for like making soups, gumbos, chilies, you know, things like that. And what I do is when I buy them, they have these little loops on the side and I make these little handles with these dimples. And the way they work is you can either, you can take like, you can, you can, pick these up if you've got like leather gloves or uh, leather um, sometimes I will carry small pieces of scrap leather and you can pick these things up and hold them by the leather these are kind of hard to pick up or what I do is I make these little things and what they are is they're spring loaded here and you clip them on the sides like that and you clip them on the sides like this 
And see, the way that way these things do is you can hang them over a fire like this, and they've got a little dimple. But if you want to set them over a fire, the the you've got plenty of room in here. This thing, because it's got two pieces, it won't fall over into the fire and get hot. It's always up here, and so it always makes it to where you can you've got it right there where you don't have to get anywhere near the fire. But anyway, a lot of times I've got another box over there that's just full of. Just hundreds of these little bags that I've made with all these little zip ties. I mean, these little, uh, what do you call them? Cord locks. I'll put the, the cookware in there and I'll pull the cord lock tight. All right. And what I do in general before I go on some of these trips is I'll, I'll pick out some of these things that I want. And it's like, I mean, I just, it, it's overwhelming. The things that I have here, all of the, the pans and all the cookware, and in general what I'll do is I'll just, like I say, if I want something, I'll grab it off the shelf, and then I'll put it in a bag, and it'll be my cook kit. Okay, that's just, I'm just kind of, kind of getting this stuff out of the way, and say so I'll just, and then whatever utensils I need, I'll put in the bag, and I'll have with it. Alright, now that's like, um, Let's see, let's put this right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything over here to the side as I show it. I'm already five minutes in. So I think I'm going to start piling this up. And as you can see right here, there's... Let's move this down a little bit. So that you can start seeing some of the actual cookware. I have all kinds of bits and pieces of mess kits, pans, uh, parts and pieces of, of mess kits. I'll just numerous pots and pans everywhere that I have on the shelf. You know, let's move these over here. This is another big bowl right here. This is my bowl that I use for making uh, massive amounts of soup, red beans and rice, gumbo. Uh, I make cowboy coffee out of this. Now, whenever I bring a big stainless steel bowl like this right here, I'll bring a dipper. And I think I've got four dippers here. I have a dipper like this. Sometimes I'll throw it in there, carry it. I have a little tiny dipper like this, stainless steel. Here, this is another dipper right here. This is a good dipper because it's it's got a, a handle on the back where it can hang off the stuff. This little jewel right here is more like a little mini pan because it's got copper on the bottom of it. Okay. So there's my dipper. They, I don't think I've got more than these. I think four is all I have. So let's put these over here. I'm just trying to knock the bulk of some of this stuff out of the way. Some of this, some of this loose stuff that I have. But I'm trying to ease along here. And I showed you these. Let's see. Let's show you. Uh, where did I put it? Here it is. Now these little things here. That's another little bowl. Put this over here. This place is going to be a mess when I get done. I love these little bowls like this that have these little uh, things on them because they're very easy to grab if you've got like leather gloves or Nomex gloves. Or another thing that I like about them is that you can grab them with a pair of uh, multi-tool. See, multi-tools are really nice that you can reach down and grab them. Let me ease you down here so you can see this a little bit better. See, you can, these are, these are great. You just reach down there and you can grab them and you can you can hold them like this no matter how much is in them. This was my little oatmeal pot. And I've had several of these. And it's a little pot that's got handles on it. That was the perfect little amount of oatmeal or grits. And if I'm ever really hungry, then I carry the bigger one. But, you know, those are cool. I like those with the, uh, the little handles on them right there. All right. Now, see, I'm already kind of going wide open. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to switch over to the store-bought sets for here here for just a second. Now I'm trying to keep this from being too chaotic, but it's going to wind up being. <laughs> uh, let's see. Real quick, uh, here's something right here. Here's another pile. Let's move the camera down. Just because simply I'm just showing you the bulk of the things that I have. Okay, and I, I love these little tiny stainless cups here. I have all different kinds of stainless cups. These stay on the shelf because what I'm doing is if I'm making a bunch of little tiny side dishes, I'll carry those. Or if I'm making like a, a heating up a dipping sauce, I'll make them. And see, so here's a bunch of them, little ones here. This makes an extra large muffin. I like that pan. That's good. 
And that's like that. Sometimes I eat out of that pan. Here's a pan that's got a bunch of holes in it in the bottom of it. I made a, a, a steamer out of it once. See, just all kinds of pans there. And this is a super, super heavy duty piece of stainless steel with welding rod around it. And I, I made a, uh, it's part of a steamer. You can set it over a pot and steam food on it. That's pretty neat. So let's throw all this over here to the side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my uh, store-bought cook kit. Now the thing about my store-bought cook kits here is these two are Coleman Exponent. And I do not do, I do not use them over a, a uh, wood fire. I do not. I only use these on an ISO Pro uh, stove or a propane stove or alcohol. And this one, what this is, is it's a two-piece set and it's coated inside out, it's anodized, and uh, it's got a lid that has two different diameters on it. So this will fit the big pot and this will fit the small pot. That one lid will fit on both of them and they nest together and it comes with a little anodized silicone handle so that you can just reach over here and grab these things and not get them all scratched up. These are really nice and I take care of them and that's the reason why I don't I don't use these over a wood fire ever. These are for just straight up backpacking wood stove type deal. Um, this other set here is a Coleman Exponent and it is incredible because it's a four piece little bitty set and this is good for cooking for multiple people or multiple um, multiple um, like sauces and soups and side dishes. Now this jewel here is nest together, top comes off, squeeze the handle, okay, and it's got a little handle on it, and then you pull this other one out, see this inside nest together like this, same thing, that handle it pops out, so you've got two of these, and these are all coated inside out, I'm, I don't use these often, I don't want them all scratched up, and then these have these handles right here, you know. This is just your basic ramen noodle soup, chili eating kind of deal. Okay, try to take care of them jewels right there. And then I have one more store-bought cook set. Well, that just popped off. Let me just move this to the side because I'm trying not to get too much, too much dead air time. This is a tech sport set. Now, this is a set that has actually stayed together in the bag. Uh, I have other sets, and I think I've added something to this. Yes, I added a lid to it. This set stays together, but I have bought multiple sets of these, and there's a bunch of these that are still over in my bags over there. Now, the way this pan works is it's just your typical backpacking pan. It folds up. It's got the silicone-coated handles. It had a copper bottom, but you can't hardly tell now. Now, this pot here, it's got a real nice, heavy handle on it, and it didn't come with a lid. They claim, they claim that, uh, let's see if I can get this flip over. They claim that if you need a lid, you can use this. But a lot of times, I actually use this as a frying pan. I'll be cooking meat while I'll be stirring rice in this. So I made a lid with some little air vents, I mean, some little holes off to the side because this is twofold. Not only will this seal off as a lid, but I can hold the lid on and pour the liquid off of whatever I'm cooking right off here off, out of the side. All right, those are my store-bought kits. And then, of course, let's, let's go to my Moore's pot. This is a store-bought Moore's pot, pot. Okay, it's anodized aluminum. It's nicknamed the Moore's pot. It's made by, uh, I think, Four Dog Stove Company. Uh, this thing here has got the handles on the back that fold up. This is anodized. You can hang it over a fire. It's got a nice lid to it that's real tight. Inside's anodized. I haven't really used this one too much yet. I haven't broken it in much. But talking about the Moore's Pot, this is also similar to what's nicknamed a billy can, and I'll show you my two homemade billy cans next. When we left off last time, I left off with talking about the Moore's Pot, how, you know, it's, it's similar to what's called a billy can. Some people, there's a brand called a zebra can. So I'm gonna show you my homemade versions of them. I, I know I've got more than one, but I found these. And what this is, is that the way mine is, is it's got a lid goes on. It's got, it's got a handle welded on it. All right. Now the way this jewel works is with this pot, you have to have handles to hold it along with a, a hanging handle. Okay. Same thing as like this wherever from back in the 50s or 60s. This design has been around forever. 
you hold on it back here and you hang it from here. Well, I have incorporated it all in one because the design of this handle here, it's easy up a little bit. The design of this handle here is it'll hang, you can see the shape of it, is it'll hang like that, or if you flip the handle this way, it lays all the way down, but there's some little stobs machined on the side to where this will stand just like that. And you can use it like a handle like this. So that's 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 my invention right there of the way this handle is made. It'll either hang, or you can just use it and it'll set it over the fire just like that. And then it's got a real tight lid. And as usual, you know the, the requirement, as Moore says for these things, is the lid needs to fit good and tight to where if you knock it over. See, it took a lot to get it off right there <laughs> and then this thing it'll it'll come off if you if you want it to it just squeezes right on there it's a stainless steel handle so anyway i think that's kind of neat that's homemade homemade billy cans move that over here now this is my other billy can this is my extra tall billy can right here and what this is is this was made out of an asparagus pot so let's open this thing up actually it is an asparagus pot <laughs> see how tall it is and it's real tall if you've got a real small narrow fire this works good for it but this thing i have a, a a piece in the top now this thing it's got the same same deal right here what i did is i bent these these two little pieces of wire like this and what they do is they go in here and i bent this center piece with a dimple right here that goes down and the way these things work is they just go inside here, these handles. Now, I didn't weld these handles on. These handles, these handles right here, they come from the factory just like this. And all I did is I made this to where it would hold up like that. All right? And you can, you can take it off the fire if you want to. If you want to set it on the fire like that. Or you can, you can hang it very easily. Just leave it hanging over the fire while you're cooking. But now what you can do is you can put this like soup or chili or whatever in here. Or what you can do is you can fill this up with water and heat it up. And with this pan right here, you can actually cook things up in the top. You can cook like solid food at the top and have your liquid food at the bottom. So that's the basic idea behind my tall billy can. And if you think... I don't know if you, I don't know if it's, this is considered a, a, a billy can or not, but this is a grease pot. It's a tall skinny can like that. And this thing, it's a Amusa pot. It came from Walmart. It's very, very cheap. That's a good, that's a good pot to have around right there. Um, that might be all, that might be all for my billy pots, I think. Oh, I've got my pivot pot, kind of similar to a, a billy can. I think I showed this in a video not long ago. I cooked, boiled some boudin in it. And the way this little jewel works, and it just looks like a normal, looks like a big giant mug <laughs> of some kind. But what it is, is the way it's made is the handle is a tubular stainless steel. And what you do is you take a stainless steel spike, let's ease you up a little bit. You take a stainless steel spike and the top of it is radiused to match the radius in here and what you do with it is you drive this in the ground and you set this on it so that it locks in here and you got the fire here and when you need to move it to the side you just move it all right see and this thing will lock in on one side and it, like if you got the fire on this side you can move it around to the back side and it'll lock in right there and whenever you get ready to uh take it off the fire then you just take your leather cordage and you just grab the handle and you pull it off and then that's your, your thing. I, I call that the pivot pot. That's my invention. It's actually, I consider it as a cook set, but it is, it is cook water. Okay. So, moving right along, I think I'm going to make some more room on the table here. Now, next up, for just the sake of making room on the table, <laughs> I'm going to show you my uh, percolators. So, I'm going to show you my two. These are very old from back in the 70s. These are my Comet percolators okay this one i've melted the top and i can't get a replacement for it it doesn't say on the bottom comment no more but this is a little tiny one here 
These, they have the handle on them and they sit on a grill. You can see how small this is compared to my hand. This is truly an antique. This was bought in around 1975 or 1976. Well, made around 75 or 76. It was actually bought back in the 80s. And I think this one's from back in the 80s too, but these are both Comet. They've got, both got the black, uh, uh, hot, hot type, uh, I don't know what you call this. It's like on all the old cookware from the 70s and 80s. But those I'll set on the grill. And then these things right here, this is just one of those general percolators that you see for sale constantly now. And I've probably, I bet I've gone through probably 30 of these things. These things has gotten beat up and sanded. And, uh... I think the ones that I buy are either stand sport or tech sport, but this is a small one. I'm not sure how many cups this is. I'm not going to take the time to look. Now this is a, I see this, this is a 20 cup. You can see the size difference in the two of these. I wonder if this is printed where I can see it. This is a 9 cup. Okay, These are great percolators. Uh, this one, I broke the percolator glass top and I, went, I was able to buy a new one on Amazon. It doesn't fit in. You got to be careful when you twist it. There, it locks in because this top locks in pretty tight right here. It's got a little, it's got a little dimple on it on this side. And of course, it's got the percolator basket. It makes really good coffee. That makes a makes a lot of coffee right there. So those two, I think, are they're either Stan Sport or Tech Sport. I'm a big, big coffee drinker. I love my hanging. I love to hang them over a fire. Okay, and now my favorite coffee pot of all time is a GSI Outdoors Glacier Stainless. I love this coffee pot, and I have a special made setup that I use for this one. And I don't know how many cups this is. It's not marked on the side, but it's got a glass percolator top. The lid doesn't doesn't come off like the others. It just falls over. Everything inside it is stainless steel. It's not. Uh, aluminum, aluminum, like the other ones. <laughs> now it ain't marked on the inside. Let me look. No, it's not marked on the inside. But this is a hundred percent glacier stainless steel. Very good, very good coffee pot. It's got a real heavy duty bale with the dimple in it for hanging it. Right now, those are my current. These are my five uh, percolators that I have, and that's what I make coffee out of. And then I have a Pathfinder kettle. This is that new design that Dave Canterbury came out with. It's got the screen in it. It's not a percolator, but you can make coffee in it or steam vegetables. I figure now was the time to show that since I was showing the percolators. All right, so now I'm gonna clean some of this junk up so that I can see what I have left. <laughs> you, may, you may notice I am literally talking a lot faster than I normally do. And it's like I said, I'm just, there's a couple of things that I wanna slow down and show you and talk about. But most of it, I'm just trying to fly through it to get it done because I, it's going to be a long video. <laughs> I'm going to make it as short as I possibly can. Since we talked about percolators, percolators use water and so does cooking. Cooking uses water and you drink water. So an essential part of a cook kit is water and carrying water. So let's look at a few items and some of the things that I do. It's actually quite basic uh, what I do. <clears throat> For the most part, I am never caught without one of these two quart canteens with a strap. Because I'm, I'm not a big fan of having tons of stuff all strapped to my uh, pack. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll carry a two quart. I've got a, a, a desert tan one and I've got a black one. And sometimes I've been known to carry two and then of course I all drab one. And they'll Alice clip onto a pack if you want to. And then if uh, you want to, uh, you can wear the strap. Now, most of my two quart canteens, I cut out a part of a milk jug, and that's what I use for a cutting board. Because you gotta have a cutting board for cutting meat, and the other part of a milk jug or part of a two liter bottle seems to work really, really good for that uh, use. Now, another thing I do for carrying water is a lot of times I'll, I'll carry two one quart canteens. And the reason I carry the uh, two one quart canteens is because you can carry inside them not only you have the canteen there, and these are these are the military ones with the Alice clips, and they've got a place here, and it's like for one I'll have water purification drops in one, and then the other I'll have a cigarette lighter or a ferro rod. 
But I usually strap either of them to either side of my Alice pack. I see they come with a really, really good stainless steel cup. They're good, good for cooking in or eating out of or drinking out of. And see, they, they nest in just like that. So those are pretty good. Sometimes I'll carry them if I'm going to carry my full Alice pack. I got two of them. And I've got two covers that are olive drab and two that are camo. And I think I got a black one around here somewhere. Now, this is a very extremely heavy duty canvas version. And uh, this thing right here has got a cup and a stove inside of it. Now, a lot of people have seen, let's see, you got this really lousy version right here, this real thin one. It's like a, it may be an actual military one. Yeah, it is because it says U.S. military or U.S. on it with some numbers. And the way that thing works right there is you, uh, it's supposed to nest on here like that. And then this goes inside the cup. The cup goes inside there, but this doesn't nest very good. Sometimes components don't fit good. So what you could do is carry the stove in one canteen and the cup in another. But the way that's supposed to work is you, you build a fire inside here and then you put your cup on top like that. Okay. And then you've got like a lid you can put on it. But that's kind of a piece of junk right there. This one see this one is made by canteen shop and it's a full stamped piece with the top and it's got little raised grommets up on top and it is a beast it, that is a strong piece of gear right there you can even use it for digging holes if you have to but that one right there is pretty nice because you can put your stove on top of it i mean your your uh, canteen and underneath there you can put like a s-bit tab or some of that uh, pot, that gel that they use or some hexamine tablets. So anyway, that's, sometimes that's a part of my cook kit. Well, actually, normally it really is a part of my cook kit. And you fold them out and they'll go right inside the, the little fire hole right there. Now, something else that I have developed a fondness for lately. Let's see. Okay, right here. These things here. I really, really like these things. These are so cool. And what they are is, uh, <clears throat> this is a Molly water bottle carrier. It's got a pouch on it. And uh, this is a model water, water bo Molly water bottle carrier. And uh, you can either carry a bottle in it. Let's see, I think I got one right here that's got a bottle in it. Here's another one. These are multi-cam. Now I want to say something about these things right here. Okay, I got three of them right here. Let's ease you over here for a minute. I want to say something about these. You can see the height the difference in them. Now this is a genuine Condor ball carrier. And uh, this thing right here, for years and years and years, I always bought the Condor ones. This one has got a brand new Stanley uh, cook kit in it, or adventure set. And I bought it and never used it <laughs> because I lost it. I put it behind the seat of my truck, but that's another part of my cook kit right there, or well, it was going to be <laughs> until I lost it. But I've got this, it's in a model Molly carrier, and down in the bottom, what fits perfectly is that uh, this is a container, uh, Duncan Hines icing for a cake, and you can fill this up with dried beans or rice or grits or oatmeal, any kind of dried thing, and see, it'll fit right down in the bottom and you put your, your thing over the top. But anyway, that's a part of a kit. Now this doesn't have a strap. All it's got is the molly webbing on it. And then up inside here, there's a grill. I've got a little mini grill in here with legs. I showed this in one of my videos in the past. It's a little grill that you can cook off of. A little, just a little mini kit here. And I was planning on, since this condor here didn't come with a, a strap, I was going to take a strap off of uh, my two quart canteen if I wanted to carry it around my shoulder. But this is really neat right here because this is this thing with the shoulder strap. I bought two of them in multicam because I have a multicam pack. But this little jewel here I really like because I have discovered that this will actually hold a two liter bottle. So you can bring two full liters in something like this. And if you're ever worried about it getting dirty, you know, uh, you can just throw it away and get you another one. Now, not all two-liter bottles are the same. Some of them are taller than the others. 
This is a, the Mountain Dew bottles are the shortest. This one is made by a company called Orca. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm very impressed with it. Orca, and anyway, because it's taller than the Condor. But anyway, that little jewel right there will zip up. And a funny thing is I, I ordered this and I was so impressed with it. You know, it's got the molly straps on the back and the, the molly webbing, and then it's got this padded uh, arm sling. And then it's got this pouch on the side right here. What's weird is I ordered this and I was so impressed with it that when I ordered another one, the next one that came in has a zipper pouch on the on the a zipper opening on the on the top and a zipper pouch on the bottom. So on the bottom right here is where I keep uh, pads for those uh, makeup pads coated in wax for fire starting. Now in this one I have. Oh no, just not, just knocked a bunch of stuff over. Now in this one, I'm going to get a little bit bigger bottle, but what you can do as a part of a cook kit with this, you could just carry this over your shoulder and have you a stainless steel bottle right here. And then one of these things, it's a, it's a, a fish mouth uh, holder. And what it'll be good for is, it, it is good for, um, it's good for picking up like hot things, putting things, setting things on, on, on the fire. You know, it's like a mini pair of tongs. But the other thing that you can do is that you can take these things and you can put them inside there and lift it up. And then you can um, you can hold a bottle over the fire like this. With this right here. You know, or you can take and you can, you can set the bottle. You can set the bottle in the fire and, and lift this out. I don't know if you'd seen these before. These are homemade, but you can buy these. They're, they're, they call them... I think fish mouth spreader or fish tongue or something. But anyway, that's that. And I, I really, I still like my two quart canteens for water, but I think I'm going to be, these These are a definite part of my cook kit now, these Molly water uh, pouches. And while I'm on the subject of water, I'll go ahead and talk about these cups here. I'm just, I'm pretty general with the cups. Most of my life, I'd use these cups for, for the canteen cups for cooking and eating and drinking and stuff. And then a lot of times I carried these old-fashioned blue enamel ones. This green uh, enamel one has an actual stainless steel ring on it around the top. It keeps you from chipping it. Uh, sometimes whenever I have a thermos that get, gets broken, I'll keep the old plastic cup out of it. These I love. These are double wall. These are my favorite now for drinking coffee. They're double wall with a carabiner uh, clip on them. So... All right, now I'm going to move this junk out of the way and then we'll move on to the uh, the next items to show you. Moving right along now, let's look at some of this other stuff. I got some more junk here piled up on the table. Uh, let's see. This is, a, I showed this in I think my last video. This is like a three-piece set. I have a, I have a lot of these aluminum cookware. Tons of them. I got a smaller one right here. It's actually got a lid on it. Now, those junky Coleman ones... That's got a little little aluminum bowl in it or cup or something. Sometimes I'll put things like these side by side on a grill and cook with them. So I'll put these to the side here. Um, let's see. Let's move you down here where we can look at the table right here. Now this thing right here, I don't even know what kind of stainless steel uh, bowl this is. But I absolutely love this. And I've only seen one like it because the handles are just incredible. They're just anything that's got a big old handle like that, I love. This thing is fantastic. That's great. Sometimes I'll take that, and then I'll take like, you know, if I need just various bowls for something that I'll put like two on the grill. Like I have something right here and something small here, you know. Or sometimes like if you want to make a muffin, you can put a bowl inside a bowl with a muffin mix and cover it with another bowl, you know. There's just... Anytime you see these little stainless bowls at thrift stores, grab them. I mean, I just, and they're good for like gravy and dipping sauces. Uh, sometimes like I'll take and pack a plate in here for eating. Uh, my plates, these are the plates I have. I usually carry whenever I use a plate. I've got two of these stainless steel. They're little mini plates. So they're, you know, they're perfect size, you know, for smaller portions of stuff. And then these are two small stainless steel plates. That's pretty much my plates that I use. This is an old Boy Scout mess kit. I've cooked on it a few times. Because you know, that it's one of them kind where the handle actually becomes part of the pan. 
This is an old military mess kit. There's not really much to look at in here. There's a. I don't think you can cook with this though, because it's it's not a cook kit. It's a mess kit. Let me see if I can pop this open. <laughs> Let's see now, because it's got like a, a canteen in it with a square lid, and then you could use this for something. This is plastic, and uh, this this is aluminium, thick aluminium, aluminum. Um, um, um. You could cook with that if you had to. Uh, excuse me. That's kind of neat. And there was a there was a fork and spoon kit in here that I took out and I've used for other things. But anyway, that's just a various mess kit right there. Uh, this is a bourget bourgeois. I don't know. This is something I love. The handles on that right there. That's a good piece of kit right there uh, to cook with. Uh, this I think. Let's look at this. Okay, this is some kind of a hanging pot that's got a bunch of doodads in it. These are some of the things, these are for setting up tripods. When I made one, I made a bunch of them. I made a video on that. This is for a part of a, uh, a tripod that I made with a little hanging thing right there. You'll, you'll run the three. I mean, this is, I have multiple things like this for cook kits. You'll run three sticks up in here as a tripod and then this hook right here. The hook will hold the hook will hold the pot over the fire and then you adjust it by going through here I, I did this in the video once and then I did my tripod cooker uh, I did that in a video once I think the video is called hanging over the fire and I mean here's an old lid this is a little grill that I made one time that fits on top of a, a coffee pot I mean a, a, a coffee can I have various lids that I've made with holes in them uh, this is a piece of aluminium, aluminum um, 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 <laughs> that I used to hang between the three trees on this paracord in a swamp so that you could set your alcohol stove on top. I don't even know what this is. This is something I'd made in the past. I got, there's just so much junk in here. Junk, junk, junk. There's a little hanger that I bent for hanging over the fire. Uh, this here, a bunch of bronze hooks. I've shown them in a video before. A lot of times I'll carry little pieces of uh, Scotch-Brite for cleaning pans. This is a part of a system here that I showed in a video one time. It's got a stake and a hook for holding stuff over the fire. Here's another little one right here. All you need is some kind of a little hook with a ring. And so what you can do with it is you slide it through the ring and then you can hang it over a tree limb like that. And then you can hang your pot on the end of a hook. I mean, there's just, there's so many different ways of doing this stuff. There's so many different ways of hanging things over a fire. I mean, it's just, it's, it's limitless. And I, I think I showed that in a video. <clears throat> These are Red's rings. A little flat oval looking piece of wood. I showed them in the video hanging over the fire. Of course, all this is in a, you know, stainless steel bowl just like I said whatever I'm in the mood for another hook is just there's hooks and doodads laying around everywhere uh, like I said whatever I'm in the mood for I'll go and I'll dig around in the box until I find something I want to use these are neat little ones this is back when I first started getting sewing uh, ripstop nylon I made these a long time ago with velcro and then it's lined See, that one's lined with ripstop nylon too, but that is one of those little egg pans. Single egg pan. I can't remember the name of it, but it's Teflon coated. So I've tried to, I made that, uh, this thing here to uh, protect it, keep it from getting all scratched up. And here's another one that I bought. This is a square one, and this little jewel here, I made another one just like that with this stuff. Uh, I think the inside of this has got a different kind of material on the inside. But I made it. It's a square one. I got a grill that this thing fits on. And it's Teflon coated. That thing does a good job of making an egg. And then you can take the egg and cut the egg into four squares. Just cook one egg in it. And it, it makes uh, four squares. And uh, like if you want to put it on biscuits or sandwiches or something. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. Now... This little jewel here, sometimes this, this is a little creamer cup. And this thing's good for if you want to make gravy and you just leave it sitting on the grill for pouring gravy over whatever you're going to be uh, cooking. 
this little jewel here this is a i never even used this i bought it and never used it it's a brand new cast iron lodge it's called a cast iron melting pot and i have a, a pretty large cast iron collection but i don't consider it as backpacking type stuff so i left it all put up this right here i have several pieces of leather that i use for handles and i'll show you something uh let's see here let's ease over here for a minute i got something over here that you might have seen in the past i think it's in this green one i think it's in this green one right here i showed it not long ago <clears throat> sometimes i'll buy if i find a pan that i really like and this one had a very very thick bottom with uh let's see yeah, real thick. I thought this was copper. It's got some kind of a coating on the bottom. You can see where it starts and stops. But it had just a normal plastic handle in it. And so what I did is I made, and see, this is, like I said, this is, I have a lot of pans inside these little cook kits where these grills, and that's like, say, I'll just, because that way I can just grab one of these kits, and it's not just a grill. I know there's pans in them. Like this right here's got the legs inside it. Here's the thing that I'm wanting. I made an extra long arm for this. And so what, what you do is, and then I may have put a little wing nut on here. And what I'm gonna do, let's see. And I had to put this part on here so that I'd have room to screw it on. Can you see that on there? But anyway, I've, I, I, I like, whenever I make a handle, I try to make a handle extra long. That way if I just wanna hold it over the fire, and uh, you can see the further away you are from it, the better off you are. And it breaks down because you just unscrew it and it's got a thumb screw. That's pretty neat. And I've got a bunch of pieces of leather that I'll put in my kits. And they'll roll over and snap. That way you can just use them as like a, you know, a, a, a um, I don't know. What do you call it? Where you don't get burnt. <laughs> Pot holder. <laughs> That's it. All right, and I'm going to dig out the final stuff here, the really cool stuff, and the awesome thing I have left for last. You're going to love it. <laughs> Before we get to the um, the final uh, parts and pieces at the end of this video, I wanted to show you this great big old gigantic pot here. Now, years ago, this big old pot, usually this is for car camping, but uh, whenever I used to camp with friends, the heat, a friend of mine had a big pot like this, and it slipped directly down tightly into a, a medium Alice pack. And so he had one, so I've always wanted one. And I found this in the box. And so I'm going to go through some of this stuff because this is where I keep some of my uh, smaller things in here. Now, here, I bought a bigger cutting board and I cut it into smaller pieces. You know, these things will, they'll pretty much wrap around anything. So it's good to have cutting boards. Anytime I get a hold of these little, these little disposable measuring cups, you know, that's got the lines marked on the side and stuff. I'll get them. I've got a big, a big collection of them. Uh, coffee scoopers. You know, sometimes I'll bring them. Uh, there's another little measuring cup. Anytime I get these little things, I don't throw them away. I keep them. This is a drainer, ba strainer basket. That's part of a water filtration system that I used. These are some homemade uh, skewers for whatever you want to do with them. A lot of times I'll take... Uh, sausage and dip them in pancake batter and then take this and then I'll dip it into a fryer because I have an oil fryer that I use sometimes. This is an extra large spatula. Doesn't weigh nothing hardly. Very, very, very handy. And then I got two little backpacker spatulas that I use. There's another little uh, coffee thing. And see, and I've got, uh, this is a bamboo spreader looking stirring device. I don't know what you call that. Scouring pad. Uh, my friend, my friend Ulrika, she got a channel called Gulrika. She sent me these. And what they do is they fold up, but they fold out into a, there's, there's you a bowl right there. And say, so see how small this thing is? You grab it, there's a name on it. I like these things. You grab it and you pull it out. And like there's a little cup. So you've got a cup and a bowl. See the size of them? Well, what you do is you fold them in like that and you stack them together and see how what a space saver that is those came from sweden there's another little cup another little spatula spoon now this is a neat little set right here that i found 
I can't remember where I found it now, but it's very handy, very tiny, and they're silicone coated. A pair of tongs, you know, and they're real small. They'll fit in a small pouch, and then a little spatula, and then a little whisk. I can't remember. Some kind of a Dollar Store. It might have been Dollar Tree, I think, or Family. I think Dollar Tree. I found them there. This is some kind. Of, this is a light my fire spork, you know, spoon, spoon fork on the other end. This is uh, titanium. I got two of these sporks spoon and fork on one end light my fire it's another light my fire product that's those are titanium uh this little pouch here something honestly 50 percent of the time i just grab this pouch and throw it in my cook kit because it pretty much contains what i need for most items this is snow peak titanium it's a fork and a spoon and then another one of those spatulas i think this is a gsi outdoors i've got three of these spatulas so I just leave one in here. So, more milk jugs. They go inside my canteen. I use those for for um, cutting boards. Uh, sometimes I'm fond of wood, wooden spoon, wooden wooden spatula. There's another spoon. This is a spoon here, and I can't remember the name of it. I can't see it. But it's a spoon that what it does is it folds out. Well, I meant to. It pops together. It's supposed to fold out, but I didn't do it right. See, it's a fork and a spoon. Oh, I know what it is. You break it down in the middle. I think. That doesn't look right. I don't know. I, I think I just took it apart. But anyway, I don't know what that is. A plastic bag. Oh, this was carved for me by a fellow YouTuber. I wish I could remember his name, but he carved in like a nut and a bolt. It's cool. Spoon on one side and a fork on the other side. Never use this piece of junk. I bought two of these, Columbia River Knife and Tool, some kind of a weird eating tool. Never used it. I had another one that I did use. There it is, black. I got a black one and a silver one. I just never, I just, they just didn't tickle my fancy. They, I never liked them. This was a knife I used to use for meat. It's a stainless steel. I think it's a Henkel. Yeah, J.A. Henkel. But normally I've got to where I just use a stainless steel more now. And let's see, what else we got in here? Anything else significant? A bunch of bags, garbage bags. This is a five liter kitchen sink. This thing right here, you open it up and it pops out. And you fill it up with water, and you can use it for either either catching drinking water. And see, so when the water goes in it, the sides go out. And it makes it to where it's stable, and it's got two big carrying handles on it. You can either wash dishes in it or rinse or collect water in it. That's pretty handy. And then I got another one of these that I grab sometimes. What this is is a... Uh, this is a MSR. Uh, one of those things for holding... For holding pots like if you have a pot that doesn't have a handle on it you just reach over and grab it it's kind of like it's like a universal thing because i have tons and tons of pots see right over here let's see so i just like i said in my cook kits i just i mean i've got stacks and stacks and stacks of pots and pans laying everywhere and so that's the reason why i bought this thing right here so that i could use it you know, for holding things like I could turn this into a pan or use it as a pot. Either one. It's kind of a kind of a multi-use thing. Sometimes I'll grab it along with my utensils. So, all right, I'll clean all this up and then we'll move right on along to uh, the big bowls. <laughs> That'll be interesting. This stuff that I've, I've that I've got, I have made videos on in the past, but uh, <clears throat> in the future I do plan on doing a one video on all my cook sets if I can gather them all up, get them all together. <laughs> I think that'll be interesting because, you know, I've been filming since 2011 and here it is 2018. So, you know, in the past, in the older videos, there's a lot of things that some of my newer viewers have never seen. So, anyway, one of the things is this is an antique ice bucket. This is one of the ideas from my mentor, the whole idea behind this. When you buy, when you, if you, if you're lucky enough to locate an old antique ice bucket, what it is is it's a dual wall thing. The lid, when it's together, this had insulation inside it, and it was screwed together with a knob. Now, this had insulation in it. This is like a dual cook set itself, 
And then on the inside, it has a, a, a aluminum, aluminum uh, bucket on the inside. And then there used to be insulation inside it. All right. Now the things that you can do with this thing, if you want to, is you can uh, you can set it on a grill. You fill this up with water, and then take a strainer basket and put the strainer basket in it, and steam vegetables. Now you could just put this lid on it, but you won't be capturing as much steam. So you take the bowl part and put it over it, and there you have a steamer. See, isn't that neat? The only thing is, is if you were going to hang it over a fire, you know, you could do it that way. Well, this, this, you have to turn this a certain way to get it to hang like that. Yeah. Okay, you can see you put your vegetables in there and then put the lid on over it. And then the steam will escape. It'll keep from blowing the lid off right here. With this that I've noticed that if you want to use this thing, this, this is so large, it's got such a surface area for the steam, this doesn't get blown off. And a lot of that steam gets caught in the roof and comes back down. Now another thing you can do, this is a jewel. If you ever find one of these, buy it. It's a, a, a rival, I say a crock pot bread and cake bake, anodized. And this thing is actually designed, it's anodized, and it's actually made for baking. And I mean, you can bake anything in this thing. It's got a lid, and when the lid goes on, well, it's got to be turned a certain way. Now, what am I doing here? Hold on a minute. Here I am looking like a moron. There you go. When you turn the lid a certain way, this locks in. So what you do is you put your dough in there, and then you take this thing right here, and then you take the inside. Now, see, this is where this is handy. You take the inside of this so that it holds off the bottom. Okay, you put it in the bottom so that the heat won't be touching the bottom of this. But there'll be heat all around this, and you slide this inside. So you see, this is sitting in there, and you, you're allowing that steam to escape through there. And then you put this on to kind of keep the heat in. And you hang this over the fire, and you can actually bake with it. Ain't that cool? So, I mean, that's how you can take, that's how you take an old ice chest, and you turn it into a, a, a steamer and a baking oven. Ain't that neat? Notice something over here that I forgot. It's an old steamer, because... Before I show you the big bowls, uh, this steamer over here is, it's really cool. And what it is, this is very extremely old. I had another one that I ruined, and I managed to find another one, and I haven't had the nerve to use it yet. But this is by Miro. Let's get this out. This is simply a pot, a Miro aluminum pot, with a little vent up on it. See the vent that'll open and close? And what it is, and I was going to replace the handle, but then I found out that these are uh, collectible now. So I don't really want to do it. But with the old one, the way I did it is I put water in the bottom. Okay, fill the bottom up with water. And then you see these things right here? I know you've seen these before. I can't remember the name of them. I think they're for rinse and food maybe. But all you got to do is you flare it. You just got a, a, a little pin on the bottom to hold it off the bottom. But what you can do is flare it out. And set it in here. And you got the water underneath inside this vessel here. And then whatever you want to steam, like broccoli or, or whatever, fish, oysters, clams. You put them in there. And then you'll open this vent up right here so that you can allow steam to escape. And then you hang it over the fire or set it on a grill. So that's a steamer right there. Uh, let's get this out of the way. I have some square pans. They go to a cook set that I've never used that's something in the future. I have another cook, two more cook sets over there that I've never shown on video that I'll get around to showing one of these days. I'm going to make a video on them. They're killer. Okay, let's talk about bowls now. All right, bowls. Big stainless steel bowls. I have several of these bowls. Uh, i got one right here. Now, these bowl cookers... What a bowl cooker. The, the, the uses for a stainless steel bowl is unbelievable. Now, I showed you earlier my big stainless steel bowl that hangs over a fire. Well, these large bowls like this, you can do anything with them. Now, about five years ago, I did a series of videos called Bowl Cooking. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4. I should have done a Part 5, but I didn't have everything set up for it. But what you can do with a stainless steel bowl, the way this thing is rigged up right here is it's got these loops. It's got four loops. And you hang it between a tree 
between trees on bungee cords and you set the bowl in. And what you can do with this bowl is you can make uh, chili, soup, beans, whatever. When I did that video, I did um, red beans and rice and alligator. And so what you do is you put it in there and it hangs over the fire and you put a pizza pan over the top of it and that's what seals it off. Alright. <clears throat> so, you make stews, chilies, whatever. Uh, you would take that a step further with this thing and what I have made, let's see, that's all the part of one Take that a step further and another thing that I have made right here is what you can do with this is you can take this ring that I made and this will slide right inside the frame of my backpack and this sets over two logs, tie two logs to a tree and what you do is you put the bowl inside here and then you actually put the fire in the bowl and put a grill over it and then you've got like a little tabletop griller and I made a video on this one too. Alright, the other thing you can do with the bowl is you can take a bowl and you can just throw a bowl in the fire, set a bowl on the fire, or you can um, you can uh, use one of these things that I made, you can mount it to a tree right here, or I can bring my ring from my bowl cooker. Now I made three different sizes of these bowl cookers, I got a, a, this large, and then I've got a medium and a small, or you can hang this from a tree over a fire, but the idea behind this thing is you can bake with it. I have found this pan fits perfect inside here. Absolutely perfect. Now I made a video on this too. And what you do is you put this in the fire and then you put another bowl over the top of it and you have an oven. Because what you're trying to cook is completely encapsulated in hot air. So bowls are incredible. I love bowls. They have numerous uses. I have used them in several videos. If you're interested, look back in my older videos. Uh, this thing, these larger bowls right here, uh, they're good for everything. I've got a bunch of them. Uh, but with a bowl, there's several cookers I did. I even did a smoker. And these little knobs right here, they have meaning. There's a reason for that. And you have to look on the video to find out. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna dig out for the very final segment. I'm not going to get out another box because I know this is a long video and I think I've shown most of the good homemade stuff. I am going to show something that has been asked about. I've only shown it in one video and it is wicked cool. And I'll explain more about it here in just a minute and you're really going to like it. But it's it's a part of my, my cook kit. <laughs> Alright, may as well close with the, the coolest thing that I own. <laughs> Alright. See this? Make sure you take a good look at it. Okay. What does it look like? It's a bag. It's a fleece bag. It's velcroed at the top. Alright. So what you do is it opens up. Okay. Now in general it just looks like a fleece bag with a divider. It's easy down here. Okay. Now the idea behind this fleece bag see how it's all sewn up now, I'll just say this. I've got the original, and I've even got the pattern, and these are very, very, very hard to sew, and I'm fixing to show you why. <laughs> it's got a divider, and the idea behind the divider is, say, you're going to carry your cookware, and you don't want it clanging around together. Now, say I just pulled one piece out. Okay. It's a pan, right? Typical pan, okay? Now, I didn't want it clanging around. See the divider? I didn't want it clanging around on this other pan, so I pulled it out. Alright. Didn't want them banging around noises. Now, this still still looks like just a normal bag, doesn't it? <laughs> With a divider in it. Okay, now here's the cool part. What I'm going to do, last time I showed this, several people looked at it and studied it, and, and they, could not re, they could not make another one of this. So what I'm going to do, it's a bag, and I'm going to reach in... And I'm going to pull out part of the divider. Okay. So what I have done is I have pulled out this bag. Pulled out part of the divider. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in. Let's see, you got it right here. Okay. I just pulled out the divider because it was folded over. I'm going to reach in with the bag. No funny stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to turn it inside out. And what do you have? It's a balaclava. <laughs> oh, check it out. There you go. 
talk about multiple, multiple use gear. This is a balaclava. And I just turned it inside out. Now the beauty of this thing is, the balaclava part in this folded over, okay, this was the divider, all right? Now, when you get done cooking, you have to keep your pans clean when you put them in here. Now, when you get done cooking and you want to wear this, not only is this a balaclava, but I'm going to show you on the back back here, it's got an extra opening, okay? So this also is a pillow, because remember, this is the actual bag on the back side. The divider is the, the balaclava. And so what you're going to do on this actual back side here is if you've got... Um, Let's see. Let me reach back here. I'm just grabbing anything cloth. Let's say you've got some extra clothes. Okay, this is this is another bag. This is a pair of gloves. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to stuff these down inside here. So what I have done now is I have essentially padded the back side of that bag. So I've got padding in here because there you can put a shirt in here, gloves or whatever, and then you pull the ball of cloth back on. All right. Now I stuffed it up too high, and you can sew these to perfection. You can make them different. Now, if you look at the back of my head, how it's padded, this is now a built-in pillow. <laughs> See, during the winter, and you have to you have to position this stuff. Those gloves, I don't think, are working good. But you have to position this stuff back here. To where you can lay down <laughs> but anyways like i said you you looked at this and i explained it better than i did when i showed it in that one video a long time ago it's hard to make but if you can figure out how to make it i've so, i've got the pattern and i've sewn them backwards <laughs> but anyway that's the little jewel of my cook kit right there that's pretty cool so all right i think i showed all i need to show the video doesn't need to be any longer <laughs> So let's, let's close this up. This is going to be a long video. Of course, by the time you see this, you're already at the end of it if you stayed with me this long. I actually had to switch cameras because I actually filled up one of the SD cards, and I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> well, at least not off of one battery I haven't. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to tag anybody on this one because this is what I consider an open tag. Uh, Jeps Outdoor Adventures, uh, he did it. Uh, the idea behind it was show your cook set and it doesn't matter if it's store-bought it doesn't matter if it's homemade it does not matter show your cook set okay it, we're all going to learn from each other I think that was the idea behind it because us the bushcraft community you know camping hiking community you know pr probably survival community too uh, <clears throat> we all learn from each other we are smarter than me you know what i mean us together we can learn from each other and we may pick up some tricks from your cook set so i'm going to put his name of his channel in my uh description box and then if you want to do this tag if you're going to do this video tell me in the comment section or send me a message and i'll put your channel name in my uh the description box too saying that you're tagged that way people can they can go to my description box and find out who's doing this video. And so your your name will be on there. Uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, I can't, I don't want to limit it to like three or four people. Whoever wants to do it, I think it's a great thing. Show your cook kit. We can learn from each other. Uh, hope you wasn't bored. Uh, hope some of this stuff was interesting. I rambled on, went as fast as I could. I left four boxes full of, full of cook stuff because I, I just, I can't show it all. <laughs> So, y'all have fun, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to get that shelter done. I ran into a bauble, uh, but when it gets done, you're really going to like it. And I shall see you in the next one.